Thank you for joining us for God's Word for the Modern World, New Beginning Baptist Church's Adult Sunday School class. Well, we were, or have been, talking over several weeks now about uh, Christians in the end time. How should we act? What should we be concerned about? Etc. Yeah, we went to uh, Matthew chapter 24 and 25 when the apostles had asked the Lord himself, okay, when, when, what's going to be the signs of the end and when are you coming? In essence, uh, it, it's the, the uh, anxious anticipation of the Lord's return to set up his kingdom was evidently foremost in the disciples' minds because here, even before the the Lord's death and, and resurrection, they were asking about it. And then, if you remember in Acts chapter 1, okay, the Lord's getting ready to ascend to heaven, and what do they ask about? Right? The same thing. When are you coming back? When are you going to set up your kingdom? You know, and, and, and the Lord remind, you know, basically told them nicely, okay, don't worry about that. <laughs> you know, I'll come when I come because the Father knows when, and you know, etc. But in the meantime, you're to be my witnesses. Amen. Yes. And so, when we were looking at his response in chapter 24 and 25, we, we looked at kind of basically four things that he presented. The first was the warning, okay, not to be deceived. Be careful. Because you can look around right now and know that it's always been that way since the beginning, but it, it, it predominates yes. how much deception there is even in churches that claim to be Christians. Okay? Churches who will turn on biblical Christianity and call them hateful. Okay? We, we've always heard those that you know claim that Christianity is a bloody religion and, and so there's other Christians that will criticize Bible believing churches because and we'll get into that some here today they don't want sound doctrine and where does sound doctrine come from the Bible so they'll call themselves Christians but they'll deny the power of Christ Okay? shouldn't surprise us. It's in the Bible. So he says, beware. As Christians, we need to continually okay, go back and reassure ourselves on the fundamentals of faith. That's why so many in the Bible will hit again today. You know, the, the, the writers will say, remember. Right? They're talking to Christians and they'll say, remember, remember the words of the Lord and the apostles. Remember the scriptures. Remember, okay, your call. Except remember, we need to remember things so that we won't be deceived. Then we looked at the parables that he, he gave, the parables of ten virgins. And the point there was, you know, what, what was the problem with the, uh, the uh, five unwise virgins? He said, I never knew you. I don't know you. That's a shame. How many people in our churches yeah. are not really saved? Don't really know Jesus, and he doesn't know that you don't have a personal relationship with Christ. So we need to make sure. The other things we looked at two parables that he had on servants. The point was, we as servants first need to believe what this book says and be anxiously waiting for the Lord's return, serving Him, helping other Christians, right? Mm -hmm. right? And the second parable was about the talents. We need to go beyond that and be serving Him by sharing what He has freely given us, mm -hmm. the gospel of Jesus Christ. So then we looked at <clears throat> the fourth thing, which was not a parable, 
but a disclosure of a future event where he's going to judge the goats and the sheep. And we looked at many aspects of that, but really the point that he was, that we can take away as Christians in the end times is we're to be loving one another, showing Christ's love, God's love, to a lost and dying world, first, to fellow Christians, and second, to all men. We've looked at those four things, but there's a couple other uh, scriptures that kind of tie into this, uh, what Christians should be doing, and it reiterates many of these points in a slightly different way. So I wanted to include though these two books in our study here, just to help us understand and, and, and reinforce what we've already talked about. The first is 2 Timothy. If you think about 2 Timothy, this is, this is you can be turned there because we're going to start with chapter 1 and go through, hit a few verses in each chapter. If you think about 2 Timothy, Paul is writing this to Timothy to encourage him, to instruct him, because he knew his time, Paul's time, was nearing an end. <coughs> So, <clears throat> if you think about 2 Timothy, what he is instructing Timothy about are what he feels are very important things for Timothy to understand. Okay? Before he's gone. So, if we look at that, in, in chapter 1, we see his call to remember. If you go down to verse 5, he says, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith and that's important. It's, it's a faith that isn't deterred by anything. It's a strong faith that doesn't get sidetracked, etc. It's, it's, it's a steady thing. Unfeigned faith that is in thee, which first uh, dwelleth first in your, uh, thy grandmother Lois, and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Verse 6. There, wherefore... I put thee in remembrance. Remember we just talked about that. Over and over and over again. We're told to remember some things. That thou stir up the gift of God. Which is in thee. By putting out of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. But of power. And of love. And of sound mind. Be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor me, his prisoner. But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. According to the power of God. Not our own actions. Because we'll fail. The unfeigned faith comes from God. We need to remember these things. And it, we, what we do, we do in the power of God. Who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which is given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. He says, we need to remember. Verse 6, we need to remember that our lives have a purpose. Go back, remember last week we went to John chapter 17. The Lord's prayer for us. There's a purpose. And it's God's purpose. Not according to our works. Not according to our doing. It's according to God's purpose. That's the calling. When you hear about the calling, that's what he's, God's talking about. It's His purpose for our life, which is the ministry of reconciliation. So first, in chapter 1 here, Paul is, is telling Timothy, pay attention and remember some things. Right. Okay? Now, it's, it's, if you really start reading this, you wonder why. Well, he mentioned there in verse 7, God has not given us a spirit of fear, 
but of power and of love and of sound mind. Remember we talked about the importance of that love which comes from the Holy Spirit. We're to show the world. But he also says we're not to be fearful because we have the power of God. Right? Satan roars like a lion, tries to discourage, tries to get us to fear, tries to you know, do everything he can to get us distracted. Mm -hmm. And he says we need to remember the only real power is God's. And Satan has no power except for what God, who has all power, lets him have. We can go, we can go back to Job and see that clearly. Right? But many, many other things. So, but you, you might wonder, well, why is he putting this here? Well, it's because of what he's going to say in the following verses. Right? It's important for us as Christians in the end time to remember we're not to fear. We need to remember that the power we have is through God, not ourselves, and that the love that we can show is God's love through the Spirit. And we have that sound mind. <laughs> we may not believe it <laughs> sometimes. But what he's talking about there, and we'll get into it a little bit later, that sound mind is the ability to understand the Word of God. Right? We need to remember that we understand the Word of God through the Holy Spirit that is in us. And we're not to let the world and those around us confuse us. And he'll get into that a little bit. So he's reminding up him up front. Okay? And then he says, <clears throat> down in the first, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, let's see, down in verse 13, he instructs him to hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. He says, that's the sound mind. Okay? It doesn't mean that we have a sound mind and therefore we can understand everything in this world and, and we're all you know, astrophysicists and can understand you know, all that stuff. No, that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about the scriptures and understanding the scriptures. And we can understand and stand on the scriptures because we know that's the power of God. That's what he's saying in chapter 1. He's admonishing to remember. Why? Because let's turn to, to let's see, chapter 2. Okay? And he says, again, remembering sound words, it says down in uh, verse 14, of these things put them in remembrance, charging them there before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit but to the subverting of the hearers. That's a real warning right there, right? I know none of us have ever liked to argue a point. <laughs> He's warning against that. Why? Because there's a danger in doing that that you might start thinking, because Satan will do this to you, well, maybe he has a little bit of a point. Right? The one who is arguing the lie, all of a sudden we start to think, well, you know, human logic, that kind sounds good. Right? And the Lord says we're to love everybody. And we are. But that doesn't mean we're to accept the sin. And that's where the liars will deviate. Yeah. They say you have to be all accepting. Yeah. No, we have to love. And if you really love someone, you pray for them, you try to warn them if they're heading for a fire. Yeah. Right? How many of us would say, okay, I have to be very accepting of everybody. 
So if you want to run into this burning building and you may not know that it's on fire, I, I just have to accept that and let you go because I love you. No. If you love a person, you're going to tell them, that building's on fire, don't go in there. <laughs> right? They don't understand it. The problem is, if you start trying to argue with them or discuss with them, okay, there's a danger in the subverting of the hearer. Okay? So he says, verse 15, going back to, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> Verse 13 in chapter 1, hold fast the sound words. He says, verse 15 in chapter 2, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. That's what we see abounding in this day and time. Vain babblings that are being pushed off as some kind of revelation from God, the way we should be living. No. He says, study. Go back and look at the words. Go back and remember. Okay? So that you will be approved. Okay? So that you'll know the right truth. Right? So you'll have that sound mind. Yeah. So that purpose of it, so that we can be a workman, right? that needeth not be ashamed. Yeah. Not be ashamed of the coming of the Lord. When he right. Looks at what we've done in our lives. He said, that's so important, study. So he's saying over here, we, we have a sound mind through the Holy Spirit. Right? The Holy Spirit uses the Word of God to help us. And we need to study that Word so that we're grounded in that Word. So that when we hear the vain babblings, we can avoid them and say, I'm not even going to listen to that stuff because there's a danger in listening to it. Right? So, that's what he's saying. But again, what's the real motivation here? Chapter 3. This know, verse 1, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetousness, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. You ever see a time where there's such blasph blasphemy going on? Even in the halls of our own Congress. And nobody's ashamed of it. Blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. We've always talked about it. We've always seen some of these things throughout history. Paul, in other places, talked about the mystery of iniquity and that it already works in his time. There was, there's always been these things. But if you go down that list, it is so, every single one of them is so predominant right now in all of societies. <clears throat> and if you don't follow world news, which they never report anymore, and we don't even watch network news anymore, but if you don't have some channel of world news, you don't understand. That's not just America. That's the world right now. The world is that. Yes. So Paul is reminding him, it's so important that we understand that in the last times, things are going to get bad. Okay, for Christians. We in America have been God's spoiled children. Right. Yes. All of our lives, all of us that have grew, grew up here, I think we all grew up here, 
what we call foreigners in here. <laughs> okay? Although, you know, if you go back far enough, well, we're all foreigners, right? <laughs> anyway, we've been spoiled. There's been a few times in, in American history where Satan tried to push a little bit. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's not been until recent times. And we can see it, how it, he gradually creeped in. But he's at a point now where I truly believe he thinks he's in control. Now, you would think he'd learn yeah. that he's never really in control. But anyway, that's another whole, whole thing. Satan is, is running rampant. That's why Pastor will probably hopefully mention it again. We, we, we may need to adjust our prayers and get some biblical verses, and that's what I'm going to try to do, to start praying against the evil forces. In there, right? We've been praying for revival, for our Christian brothers and sisters and so on. But we all also will be needing, and, and so we need to just look at that a little bit deeper and understand it, praying against the evil. Anyway, because it's going to abound. He's going to say it later. These evil men are going to abound worse and worse as time goes on. That's just part of it. So again, but what are we supposed to be doing? He's given instruction here. Okay? Uh, chapter 3, verse 10. He says, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, Purpose of faith, long suffering, charity, patience, uh, persecution, afflictions which came from Antioch and, and Iconium and Lystra. What persecutions I have endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me because of the power of God working. He says, Yea, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Again, in America, we've been spoiled children. We look at those kind of verses, and we can think about other places in the world where that's been true. It's coming to America. I'm sorry. I hate it. But you can see it. The pastor up there in, in Canada said the same thing. And to paraphrase what he said, is he never thought in Canada he would see such persecution against the churches. They, they arrested him again. And this is the pastor that you know, kicked him out of his church, and, her, and then they finally arrested him and put him in jail for a while uh, because they were meeting during COVID when they weren't supposed to be meeting. And, and now he came to the U.S. and was traveling around trying to warn churches here. Yeah. It's coming to America. <coughs> You know, the mandates yes. that are not laws, no. okay, but are treated like laws. Mm -hmm. Look at what's happening in Australia, okay, right now. So you again, if you're not listening to World News, the police are arresting people for not wearing masks in public. I didn't watch the video; I just heard about it. Uh, I think it was a teenage girl. The police wrestled down to the ground and arrested her because she didn't have a mask on. Okay. The mandate is not about coronavirus. The mandate, I'm sorry, I'm ranting and raving a little bit, but the point is, Satan is using these kind of things right. to take control and force <laughs> us to do things that are not biblical. Yes. He wants to shut churches down. That's part of it. The ultimate goal is he wants control on everybody's life. Okay? If I'm being too political, I'm sorry. But the point is, what is he saying here? We're going to suffer persecution if you're a Christian. Jesus warned us many times. Right? The world doesn't love us. Now, we live in a nation for our, our lives so far that was a Christian nation that did, not necessarily loved us, but at least respected us. 
as a society. That's gone. Yes. Okay? There is no respect for Christianity anymore. No respect for the church. No respect for pastors. Right? It, we all remember a time where, you know, when we were younger, where pastors were respected. Even if, even if a guy was a, a, or a lady was a lost sinner, they still had respect for the pastor. Not anymore. Okay? Matter of fact, this one we were just talking about in Canada, there's some out there that tried to burn his house down. They've gotten death threats. His whole family. There's people out there that want him and his wife and his kids all to be killed because they're Christians. Okay? The world is rotten. It always has been. But it's, it's worse right now. Again, to me, those are just all indications how close we are to the end. Yes. They've always been around, yes. But it's just so predominant through the whole world right now. So it goes on and says, <clears throat> in verse 13 he says, uh, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. We talk about that all the time. How in the world can the people of this nation not look at what's going on and see how evil it is? Because they're not only deceiving, they're being deceived. When Paul talked about in 2 Thessalonians there, about when the Lord comes and we're taken out, that they'll believe the lie. Remember he says... The mystery of iniquity, that's part of the mystery of iniquity. We don't understand how they can be deceived so much. But he says it already worketh. They already are being deceived. That's why they fall in line against Christian stands. That's why there's so many that, that if you take a biblical stand for the sanctity of marriage, yeah. therefore you're against homosexual marriage and all this stuff that goes with homosexuality then you're evil. They'll say we are evil because we take biblical stands. Yeah. If you believe in sancti sanctity of life yeah. and are against abortion, yeah. okay, they'll say you're evil. There are some in our <laughs> Congress even that says abortion is the will of God. Can you imagine that? That's what he's talking about. They're, they're deceived, they're deceiving, and they're being deceived. Yes. He says, but, verse 14, continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And he talked about we as Christians, this goes back to what he said, we need to remember who is the author of this book. We need to remember that it's the Holy Spirit in us that helps us understand. We need to remember and go back and study so that we can make sure that we are standing the way we should in these days and times. That's what Paul is trying to get across to Timothy here. In chapter 4, verse 1, he says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be instant, in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time shall come, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap up to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned to fables. He says, You've got to understand this world that hates you will turn off the gospel. They'll speak evil of the gospel. 
They're going to run after their own lust with itching, you know, place, itching ears. Why? Listen to the preachers that tell them what they want to hear. Rather than the truth. This word is truth. Jesus said it himself said that. We need to be grounded in this word. Understanding that the world's not going to want to hear us. But that doesn't stop us from sharing the truth. But he said how to do it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Exhort with all, and, and rebuke and reprove with all that, with long suffering and doctrine. You need both. You need the long suffering, the love of Christ, and you need the word, the doctrine. That's why we need to study to be approved so that we can be the good workman. He's saying, in these end times, what is important? That we understand and be able to effectively, with long suffering and love, share the gospel in spite of what the world wants. Right. In spite of whether they want to listen or not. And you don't just ram it down their throats, that doesn't do any good. That's where the long suffering comes in, right? That's where the leading and guiding of the Spirit comes in. That's why we need to do it in the power of God rather than our own power. The power of God is what? The Holy Spirit is the power of God. We need to do all this in the power of the Holy Spirit. As He leads and guides. He's the one that can help us have the long suffering. Because it's not in me, for sure. Right? It's not in us. Right? And one preacher I was listening to, he says, it's not in preachers either. He says, if you want to find out, just drive with me on the road a little bit. It's not in the preachers either. <laughs> it comes from the power of God. That's what he's telling Timothy here. He says, in these end times, it's going to get bad. People aren't going to want to listen. They're actually going to accuse you of being evil because you're preaching the gospel of Christ. But he says, that shouldn't deter us. We need to understand, go back to and pray one for another. Back to chapter, excuse me, 1 and verse 7. That God has given us the spirit, and not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. The spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. It's all tied up in the Holy Spirit. We need to pray that we can yield our lives to the Holy Spirit in ways that we've never done before. Because as these times get worse and worse, we won't be able to do much of anything at all without the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to understand that this life that we now live is in Christ. And we are to serve Him in love for those that are lost. Because God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. God so loved the world, and we are to so love the world. That means even when they're hateful and hurtful and say terrible things, we understand where that's coming from. It's coming from Satan and not them as an individual and pray for them and love them. Again, we say it over and over again. doesn't mean you condone the sin. Jesus never did condone, condone the sin, but he loved sinners. He said that's why he came. So we need to remember that. Okay? So, if we look through 2 Timothy, we can see it over and over and over again. Paul was given him instruction that we can glean from and say, how as Christians are we going to need to be acting and responding in these evil end times? I don't think personally, I mean, this is Tom Crane's personal opinion, and I may be completely wrong, 
But let me put it this way. I'll be very surprised, okay, if the Lord doesn't come back before the end of the year. If he doesn't, that's fine. I've been wrong about lots of things. <laughs> I'm not trying to predict. Okay, don't, don't get me wrong. But when you look at what's going on and how fast things are changing for the worse. And again, I keep saying this, it's not just America. If you look at the two things that I think Satan has used and is using now even more, the homosexual, gender, whatever stuff. He uses that, and he uses abortion. Because he's always loved to kill babies. Always. From the very beginning. Jesus said he was a murderer from the beginning. Cain and Abel. Right? Those two things are two topics, again, around the world that Satan is using to destroy civilization as we know it. <laughs> so we need to understand time's short. We need to get busy sharing the gospel. We need to get busy and we'll get into this next week praying as Christians, and Matt and I were talking about that, I mentioned this this morning. Christians, <clears throat> the only ones that can pray, right. don't. Christians, we as Christians, need to be praying. Yes. We need to be praying targeted prayers. Yes. We need to get away from these generic, bless everybody prayers. Right? And, and, and we'll talk probably more about that, and, and I'm sure as we think more about it. We need to be praying against the evil forces, praying that the Lord will help people see and understand. Okay? We have lost loved ones that have told me face to face, I don't want to hear that anymore. Yeah. Don't talk to me about it. Well, fine, but I can pray for them. And what I pray often is, Lord, send someone they will listen to. You know what they need and how to reach them. I don't. And that's, we need to pray targeted prayers like that. That's where we need to get, because we're running out of time. Okay? So... We'll, we'll look at the other scripture, which is, if you want to read ahead, just go read Jude. And remember, Jude is the last book before Revelation. Okay, so again, thinking about messages for the last times, Jude is one of them. And you'll see very similar things that we just talked about in Jude. So, we'll hit that next week. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. He is able. Thank you for joining us for God's Word for the Modern World. New Beginning Baptist Church's Adult Sunday School Class.